So I'm curious, how many of you have someone working at your company who has the job description of release engineer? So, so a good number, good number. Not 100%, I didn't expect 100%. Um, so, Release engineering is my second career. I start, my first career, I, I was a system administrator for years. Um, and uh, along the way, I discovered, I, I moved into management, uh, working for product companies, and I discovered release engineering. And then the startup I was working for kept lay, laying people off, and so because I was versatile, uh, I ended up doing a lot of the hands-on work, which included doing the build and release. And so that has been my career now probably for about 14 years. And I've been at Google for the past four and a half years. And so I'm, I'm going to talk about some of my vision of what a release engineer does, uh, uh, how I think release engineering should function in a company, and what I think the future of release engineering is, both as a career and as a discipline and the role that it plays in um, uh, deployment of products. So wh what does a release engineer do? Um, you know, a release engineer probably writes make files, yells at the developer because the developer's <laughs> done something that they shouldn't have. Uh, often they maintain the source code repository depending on how big, the com big your company is. They make Jenkins work or whatever you're using for your continuous uh, builds. They understand packages like RPMs or Debian's. They yell at your site reliability engineers because they've done something they shouldn't when res with respect to the deployment. So, so these are kinds of, you know, I think if you asked, if you went to somewhere and asked someone what your release engineers did, they would probably name at least one thing on this list. So what do I think a release engineer does? I think release engineer, our job is to accelerate the path from development to operations. Our job is to, to work with the developers and everybody along the way to make sure that the path is as smooth as possible. And if you've got a good release engineer, is like a good sysadmin, if you've got good release engineers on your team, you don't notice them because things just work. So, why do we need release engineers? Well, you know, releasing is pretty simple, right? You just check out your code, you compile it, you test it, and you release it, right? And, and we've heard talks today about how you can do this very, very fast. Well, not really. Um, you've, you know, you've got unit tests you want to run, you've got packaging. Uh, at Google, we're big on Canarian, where we, we were, we'll push uh, binaries out to a small number of live machines uh, to get some real-time uh, uh, experience with the code before we push it uh, system-wide. Uh, you've got bug fixes, so you need to reiterate on this, and you might do this several times before you actually get deployment. Well, it's not really like that either, because you've got... Um, uh, monitoring you want to do, you've got build artifacts you have to manage, you've got reporting you want to do so that people can see what the health is of the release process, where are you are in the release process and so forth. So it's actually you know, very complicated even for if your product is very, very simple. If you're, if you're shipping even just a single binary, you're going to be going through this whole process. And, and, and most of us don't ship just one binary, right? It's usually very complicated systems. So I like to talk about release engineering from the beginning. My experience has been that most companies do release engineering as an afterthought. Uh, Google did this. The reason we have, we probably have across uh, all the different uh, product groups, we we probably have 50 people who have release engineers at their, as their title, and then we probably have twice that many uh, people doing release engineering part-time as their job. But the reason Google started a release re engineering organization is because we wanted to go public, and in order to go public, we had to, um, um, Oh, I've forgotten the abbreviation, what, what, what it stands for. SOCKS, have you all heard SOCKS? 
<laughs> people are like, yes. So basically, before we could go public, we had to ha do separation of duties for software that touches financial information. Um, uh, the person who, who, builds, who writes the software can't actually build and push it to production. And so we built a, a team of release engineers. And of course, we, we, we discovered all these other benefits of having release engineers besides you know, getting to go public. Which, which was a good thing. Uh, so I like to talk about you know, release engineering from the beginning. Companies and organizations really should, you know, when you're building your development organization or your product team, you should have a release engineer. Uh, if not a full-time release engineer, someone who understands release engineering and can start putting things like your best practices and processes in place. And, and the I'm gonna talk about the reason for this. I actually worked at one company that did this. They brought me on early, very early as a release engineer, and the benef some of the benefits, well, I'll talk about some of the benefits. Um, you know, it's cheaper to put good practices in early. Uh, one of the things a release engineer can do is start standardizing things on your build configuration files. Most developers don't like to write build files. They just want things to work. They want to be able to build their software. They want to be able to push, you know, package it. And having a release engineer who can standardize on the way that's done and just tell the developers, oh, here's a template you can use. Uh, that can save a lot of time, particularly when you have to go through and rework all your build files because you're adding a new architecture and you never thought you might add a second architecture or uh, other reasons. I mean, I've had build systems where I've had to go through and, re and rework the configuration files multiple times because we did not anticipate a change. I mean, we're, we're even doing this, we even do this at Google. And, you know, we think we're pretty smart. <laughs> um, you know, the release engineers, the developers, the testers, and the SREs all work together um, in thinking about how this software is going to be used and how is it going to run. And so it's not just building it, uh, the build and pray. You don't build it and throw it over the fence. Everybody works together along the way. So, so back, e well, I guess going, going down a level and thinking about, okay, what are the things a release engineer uh, uh, works with? What are the things they need to be able to, what are the skill set they need to be able to do? Um, source code management. If we're not managing, I mean, at Google, we have a team of people dedicated to managing our source code repository. But uh, often at smaller companies, uh, we're the people managing the source code repository. Certainly, we have to be intimately f familiar with how to use it. We need to be defining branching strategies uh, for releases and being able to set best practices for branching strategies. Uh, build configuration files, I've already touched on this. Um, being able to standardize on your build configuration files can save you a lot of time, money, uh, and developer frustration. Automated build system. Uh, I, I would, I mean, I, I'm sure everyone here is already using an automated build system, or if you're not, you're thinking about it. Uh, but the release engineer is usually very intimately involved with uh, the build, the automated build system, um, setting up the, um, uh, uh, doing scripting and everything necessarily to make the automated builds work. Uh, you know, so at Google we do, uh, we do a couple of, of continuous builds. We have a continuous build system where every time a, a change gets checked in, it kicks off a build, and that change gets, uh, runs through the tests that have been configured for that particular section of the, of the uh, source code repository. And then we also have a, an automated build system that will do uh, builds on a frequency that makes sense. Uh, I work on our infrastructure team, and uh, most of our products release uh, probably weekly or biweekly. Um, if your infrastructure is changing every day, that's probably not a good thing because you need some stabilization. But uh, at Google, the more customer facing something is, the more often it's built and released. So like social actually builds every hour. Uh, they don't release every hour, but they're building every hour. And that's to get changes in as quickly as possible. You need a build identification mechanism, and this is where the release engineer can, can come up with best practices for this. You want to be able to, uh, if, you, if you have a cloud-based uh, system, is that, if that's how you're deploying your application, you want to be able to answer the question, where did this binary come from? 
how did I build this binary? So then you can trace, if there's a bug, you can trace it back to where it came from and how it was built and uh, to be able to come up with a patch very quickly. So you need to come up with some kind of unique build string that will answer that question and have it embedded in the binary so that you can, uh, you can answer that question. Uh, you know, packaging. Uh, again, you need standards for packaging. Uh, what package manager you're going to use on your machines. Um, and, and what's contained in the packages. Do you have a manifest in the package? Uh, how can you leverage uh, your native package managers on your machines to help your job easier? What kind of uh, uh, database are you using to track what's installed on, on the systems? And deployment. Um, you know, at Google, we have literally an army of site reliability engineers who uh, are responsible for, you know, it, it's basically, they're the ones that have the final say-so in how software gets deployed. But uh, 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 I have several projects where I work very closely with the SREs in how they get deployed and, um, uh, and you know, and, and, and setting up the rules for, for, for when do we do deploy, how fast do we canary, and how fast do we push out. And then reporting and auditing. We define often what information are we interested in as far as reports go. Um, um, you know, how often do we have rollbacks? That's one of the things the release engineers are interested in. We, we want to make sure we don't have to roll back, that we're always rolling forward if possible. But if we do roll back, we want to know why and we want to know the fact that it happened. And best practices. Uh, we, we work a lot on best practices and um, I support, I don't know how many teams I support. I support probably a couple thousand projects. Um, and uh, I try to make the, my team, the, my customer's job easy by telling them, okay, this is the way you do it. This is the way, this is our naming conventions for our packages. This is, um, uh, the, here are the build rules you should use. And um, here's, um, uh, you know, the, some good Canarian practices, here's some good um, um, uh, naming conventions, uh, build strings, and so forth. And so by doing that, that kind of takes it off the developer's plate, and they're just like, they're just happy to be told what to do, and they don't have to think about that. They can focus on what they like doing and what they do best, which is writing code. So the end results of all of this is, um, continuous delivery of new products. I mean, you, could, you can do that without a release engineer, but all the things I talked about help make this happen faster in a more consistent way. Uh, early bug identification, by having continuous build system, you know, the sooner you identify that there's a bug, the cheaper it is to fix it. And so if you've got a, a continuous testing system like we have, if you've got, if you're doing continuous builds, just because you're doing continuous builds doesn't mean you deploy every one of them. Like I said, social builds every hour, we don't push every hour. But, but we catch bugs early because we do that. Uh, repeatability. Um, I, I worked very early in my career. I worked for a software company and I wasn't, um, I wasn't one of the build engineers, but we actually had a release that we couldn't reproduce because of changes we made in our source code system and our, our, our build scripts. And we actually had a, a release we were shipping to customers that we couldn't go back and build. So it's very important that you have capability to repeat what you did. And that if you do a build at a, at a certain point in your source code repository, that you get the same results as you did last week, for example. You want to have enforcement of policies and procedures. You're going to ha you, you, you need to have um, um, the capability to make sure that uh, if you define a policy, like for example, you know, who can do certain builds or who can do certain pushes, um, um, that you can enforce that. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a proprietary package manager and I can, with our build system, I can define, uh, we often deploy those packages based on labels on the packages and I can control who can actually set those labels. So we can make sure that software doesn't end up in production that shouldn't. So that we don't have a development, developer version of a package that accidentally gets put into production. And so we can do that using our labeling mechanism of our packages. 
and um, a hermetic builds process. And this is one of those words everybody likes to throw around, and it's like, yeah, we're hermetic. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? And it basically means it's airtight and repeatable, and, and uh, you're going to get the same results you did last time, and it's predictable. And I like the last definition, that it's, um, you know, has something to do with alchemy. <laughs> because uh, sometimes it seems that way. Okay, so, you know, I talked about bits and pieces that get about the release engine. What does a release engineer do? And there again, it's, you know, as an engineer, it's really easy to be focused on the, um, the low level and the, the nuts and bolts. But if I'm thinking about, you know, release engineering as a discipline and where I think release engineering is going, uh, I have to look at it a little bit differently. These are all the disciplines I'm seeing uh, within Google. And uh, we've got enough release engineers that what we actually see is people kind of specializing in different areas. Uh, you know, the automation and execution, that's, you know, configuring the build files so that what flags get passed to the compiler. Um, uh, you know, we do a lot, like I said, I support like 2,000 projects, and so a lot of my time is spent on consultation, on helping teams understand the best way to use our tools, and uh, helping them make their job easier. So it's a customer support role, which I actually like, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, you know, managing the source code repository, tools development. We have release engineers that spend most of their time developing tools that we use both internally as release engineers and as our internal, our internal customers use also. Uh, audit compliance. Uh, I talked about uh, SOX compliance. Um, and uh, we, we spend a lot of effort making sure that uh, uh, we're in compliance. Uh, we work with the internal auditors. Uh, I meet with them uh, at least a couple of times a year uh, to make sure that we can answer their questions about how key products are being built. Metrics, um, you know, Google's all about data. We love our metrics. Um, and so uh, we actually have uh, a couple of release engineers that are really working on metrics. They're doing, they're looking at, um, we have these uh, configuration files our automatic build system uses called blueprint files, and they're actually doing analysis of the blueprint files across all the whole repository and reporting on, um, uh, we call them signals, on uh, uh, metrics and characteristics that we're finding in the blueprint files that's telling us about how people are doing their builds and so forth. Uh, best practices, there again, um, uh, we have a whole internal website that's nothing but best practices on how to use our package manager, what are the do's and don'ts, what, what do you put in a package, what should you not put in a package. And there again, deployment, uh, working with the SREs, uh, making sure that our automated build system, which actually was written by release engineers, um, making sure that it has the functionality we need to deploy to our production machine and our corporate machines. Uh, I work on projects where we, we deploy to the corporate machines and we also do uh, production deployments. And so these are all, you know, disciplines. And this is actually a very rich set of uh, skills um, that uh, release engineers have. I've been doing release engineers since, I mean, I've been involved with products for 20 something years. But uh, I've been doing release engineering probably since the beginning, since 2000. And um, the skills have changed and the tools have changed drastically. Uh, we saw the same thing with system administration. Uh, system administration is a different discipline today than it was 30 years ago. Uh, you know, in 2004, uh, we were, you know, typing on our terminals, we were doing make, ant, we were using CVS and SVN. Uh, I was using cruise control and a combination of cruise control and homegrown scripts. Um, we thought about deployment in terms of machines. We had machines, we're pushing software through. Um, did a lot of scripting, wrote a lot of bash, wrote a lot of ant, um, and sysadmin skills because one, we're do, I'm do, we were doing management of uh, the source code repository 
and, uh, and we need the sysadmin skills to understand how to uh, install the software. Well, things, things have changed a lot in the past 10 years. Um, a lot of people are using Maven now instead of Make an Ant. Uh, and Google, we like to have, we do our own thing. And so we have our own uh, build language that we use. Um, Perforce and Git are very prevalent, particularly Git. Git. Uh, we use both within Google. Uh, lots of, you know, there's lots of solutions for continuous build. Uh, systems today, which there were not 10 years ago. Uh, container technology, instead of thinking about machines, we think about containers. Um, and we've, we actually have you know, vendors here today who, who in, in, uh, are in the, in the space. And so um, uh, we see the same thing in the system administration field today. You think about things in terms of containers, not machine specific. Um, which is hard. As a system administrator, I love my machines. But I had to think, one of the reasons I went to Google was because I wanted to think about things differently, and I have learned to think about things differently. I've learned to think about things on scale, and I think in terms of containers. I don't think in terms of machines. And, you know, I push a lot of software, but I don't log on to those machines to interact with the software or install it. Um, you know, object oriented instead of scripting, uh, we need object oriented programming. And we're seeing this in system administrators also. Uh, we need to be able to do programming, and uh, we're, uh, the skills get, you know, the skill sets changed a lot. And we, but we still need the sysadmin skills, because at the end of the day, what is, there, there is an operating system under there, and we need to understand operating system concepts if we're going to be involved in the deployment, and even the building, I mean, because it still is running on a machine. So here's what I think the future of release engineering is, because I saw the same thing with system administration. Uh, you know, sta industry standards for job ladders and job descriptions. If you're wanting a senior release engineer, what does that mean? I mean, you, you don't know. Uh, there's no, even, even, we have job descriptions within Google, but we argue about them a lot. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice if there were industry standard ones. Uh, best practices. Uh, there's not a lot of best practices for release, for release engineering. Uh, metrics. You know, what, what are industry standard metrics? How can companies, um, uh, what kind of metrics can companies publish to communicate how effective their whole release and deployment process is working? Um, you know, compliance, there should be, I mean, there's, the government says this is what you have to do for compliance, but really what we're interested in is the implementation of meeting those compliance requirements. Uh, there's going to be college curriculums, uh, and there's, there's already actually, I know there's some work actually started with that, on that where some of the universities are very active in release engineering as a discipline and starting to do co college curriculums. We saw the same thing with release with uh, system administration. Now you can actually go to college and take classes on system administration, and you couldn't back when I was in college. <laughs> um, and you know, there's going to be more and more solutions from vendors. You know, end-to-end -end solutions, cloud solutions. I mean, Google's in this space. Amazon's in this space. Um, um, and with that is just not the, uh, only the capabilities, but the whole. You know, how great is it to just say, you know, oh, gee, here's some best practices you can use, and this is this is the the, the you know some efficient ways to think about how to release your software. So this is this is where I think release engineering is is going. And, and one of the really exciting things is, there's actually, and this, this, this kind of validates the fact that release engineering is a real thing now. Uh, there's four conferences this year that, that um, uh, cater to release engineers. Um, uh, Usenix is having two of them. There was one in June and there was one in November coming up. And I'm the chair of those, so I'm excited about that. And then IEEE had a conference in uh, April. Um, and then, you know, this conference. So this is very exciting that uh, 
uh, we're starting to see places where release engineers can come together and exchange ideas and talk. Uh, so uh, I'm, I can't wait to see what's going to happen in 2015 and beyond. <laughs>